Okay, we'll call the uh, regular meeting of the City Council for 8 14 to order this evening. Um, first order of business, we're going to have a swearing in with one of our new police officers, and I would like to call on Chief Kim Cressy to introduce our new officer. Thank you, Mr. Chief. I'd like to introduce Officer Brandon Nate. Uh, Brandon just graduated this past Friday on the uh, August 10th. Uh, Brandon just completed basic uh, training with the Louisville Metro Police Department. He joined their academy and graduated after 26 grueling weeks of basic academy and has now joined our ranks. Uh, Brandon is a graduate of the University of Kentucky, Go Cats, and has a bachelor's degree uh, in uh, communications. We're very excited uh, for Brandon to join the Barstown Police Department. And he's joined today. You can introduce uh, your parents. Uh, you want to introduce everybody that here is here with you here. No, uh, as Chief Kresick said, you know, just started. I'm excited to be here. You know, grateful to her for the opportunity, and uh, Mayor Heaton as well. You know, I'm not from a little town. I'm from Louisville actually, so it's going to be a little bit of an adjustment, but it's a pretty town here, and I'm excited to get working with all you all, working for you all, and working alongside you all. And, you know, like I said, I'm I'm super excited. Uh, this is my dad, David Yates. Uh, my mom, Rhonda Yates. Her sister, my aunt, uh, Don Barrow, her daughter, Kelsey Barrow, and their mom, my grandma, Jean Barrow. So they came with me today to support me. And like I said, I'm grateful and extremely thankful for Chief Kressig and Mayor Heaton and all of y'all here. You know, look forward to getting to work with you all and know y'all a lot better. Thank you. Welcome you to the Barstown Police Department. We're excited to have you join us. And we know you've come with a lot of training and good background. So we look forward to working with you and your help on our police force. So if you'd raise your right hand, please. And then uh, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. Be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as I continue as a citizen thereof. Faithfully execute to the best of my ability the position of police officer according to law. And I do solemnly swear that since the adoption of the present Constitution, I, being a citizen of this state, have not fought a duel with deadly weapons within this state nor out of it, nor have I set or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, nor have I acted as a second in carrying a challenge, nor aided or assisted any person that's defendant. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Okay, the next line on the agenda is uh, not anyone. Next item on the agenda is receive any input from the public. I know uh, Ms. Beavers, I think you would like to make a presentation, I think, to the, to the city. Yes, I would like to uh, pay for the fine that you all put on me for basically a crime that I haven't committed. But thanks to my parents, they uh, gave me the money to pay for it. Otherwise, I'd be going to jail without bail for 30 days. Thank you. Thank you for, for that. Thank you. And um, could you please tell me if the request that I had uh, given to Tim Butler was forwarded to the judge? No, it was. It was. It was. We, we turned it down this afternoon. Yeah. You asked for. You a, you, you asked, turned me down. Why? You. You asked for us to give you a loan. And you don't. A loan? Yes, that was what was. Required. No, it was an extension to pay because I don't have the funds in my account to pay for it. Do you what find me account? guilty? This is all. For what you're. For, do you find me judge. guilty? This is. I have been a, nothing but an asset to this community. Uh, I've repaired a home that was wasting away. Well, I'm sorry. This was all Judge C's order, not our order. 
Really? It was all Judge you, Seed. You, you, it was not Judge Seed because you didn't forward him the information. How could uh, how, right. it shouldn't have ever got to Judge Seed? This, this, this is a matter that's currently under litigation, so I've asked that it we should have never we got to litigation. Suspend any kind of conversation. It should have never got to litigation if there was a man or woman of integrity on this board. Anyone else who would like to address the council this evening? Okay, we'll move on down to the next item of the agenda. <coughs> View the minutes of the working session of uh, August 7th, 2018. Is there any additions or corrections? not to adopt them by unanimous consent. Okay, uh, the next item is the property tax options. And uh, I'd ask Tracy Hudson to present this to us. I think you've received some information in the packet. assessments for this year uh, there was a lot of reevaluations for the PBA so it upgraded the uh, or, uh, sorry increased the assessments on real estate by 63 million dollars and as far as tangible goes that was actually increased by a little over 20 million dollars so the council will be presented with a compensating rate a same rate and a 4% increase the 4% increase is on the compensating rate not the the tax rate from last year so I the mayor and I had talked and there are I laid out on this paper if everybody got it um, from 17.4 which is the compensating all the way up to the 4% and then if we took the same rates it's 4.9 percent more than what we took in last year yeah, so in the past two years we have adopted the same rate as the previous year but if we Keep the rate at the 18.12. That would generate 4.9 percent increase over last year. So that would require uh, a public hearing, and then it would be uh, subject to uh, a uh, recall. Re recall vote. So uh, I'm going to recommend that we take the rate from 18.12 cents per hundred down to 17.9. 9-0, which is below the 4%, it would be 3.88. It would not be up for a recall. As you can see, that would generate a total of $29,000 versus $29,358. So it wouldn't be a significant uh, decline there. So, uh, and then uh, generate 1.743 versus 1.765. So that's, that's my recommendation is to take the rate down, reduce the rate by from 18.12 to 17.9. So people who have not had any new assessment, their actual taxes would, would be reduced by a little bit. And then obviously those who have had new assessment, their taxes are gonna go up anyway, but the assessment's not in our new uh, experience. PBA handles that. Past years, past years keeping the rate the same doesn't usually result in a over a four percent increase because of these high amount of growth and assessments. That's why it's resulted in that. Well, this, this is just for discussion tonight. We're not going to have a first reading on this. So, as for discussing, I, I I agree with you, Mayor. I think. That way we can reduce the rates and systems, but I think we have to also recognize that we do, when we uh, have uh, higher property values or more buildings in, in the city, we do have to service those and a 3.88% uh, increase in revenue, I think it was probably necessary to do that. But and it's great that we can do that and also reduce tax rates. To quote somebody else, Mayor, we're, we're the victims of our own success in this community. So I think that it's, it's good and I agree with, with uh, Councilman Kelly.
Any other comments? Uh, you know, I, I, I believe that it seems like maybe uh, property is reassessed more frequently now. I mean, not any more than a year, but it looks like it's updated more regularly, if I'm right on that. So that's definitely gonna, gonna create uh, some more revenue because the property is getting reassessed at a higher value. So it's going, it does go up occasionally, as we all know. And yeah, we've had a lot of growth. Yes, we've had a lot of growth. The, the growth does present some issues for the departments that are non-revenue generated, sure. like police and fire protection, streets, and so forth. So, yeah. Yeah. And the growth, I guess, presents more of an issue as far as uh, loads on utilities uh, and, and services, emergency services and such. Is there any way to find out, Mayor, what the difference is between actual growth and reassessed property value, as Councilman Buckman was alluding to? Um, is there a way to find out, you know, for sure what that difference is? Yeah. The, right here where the assessment is, mm -hmm. versus 2018 assessment, the 957 million that is the new reassessed values okay. that went up about 47 almost 48 million dollars actually assessment on that on existing on existing versus new growth mm -hmm. right. so the new growth is the 16 million okay thank you and i believe some of that reassess reassessment might be just simple sales you know, where I, my house was assessed for $100,000 and I sold it for two hundred fifty. dollars it's going to be assessed at two hundred fifty. dollars So I think some of that, quote, reassessment might be just increasing value. Is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. I, well, I'm in agreement with the mayor and, and Councilman Kelly's, uh, Councilman Williams' assessment. Also, the 3.88% increase would be a fair um, assessment. Uh, and, and I guess if we go to the 4%, that also warrant, would warrant a repo vote, correct? It's not above 4%. It's, it's actually above. It's above. It's it's above. In, in, in excess, I believe. In excess of 4%. Yes. Okay. Right. And, and bear in mind, that so, it seems like the public and uh, sometimes have a problem understanding that this 4% is not a full percent increase on every person. It's right. a 4% total revenue that we collect from taxes. So. Let's try to be clear on that uh, because people sometimes get that misunderstood. They think their taxes are going to go up by 3.88%. That just means that the city is going to collect a total of 3.88% more than they did last year, <coughs> slightly above the inflation rate. So just keep that in mind. And, and if we kept the current rates, it would be more than 4%. Right. right. If we kept the current rate, it would be 4.9% uh, total. And there's another, you know, there's a number of things we've got uh, planned. Again, expansion of the fire department, two locations, uh, public works, uh, some renovation of the city hall. So there's a, a lot of those departments are non-revenue generating departments. So this slight increase in total revenue will be put to good use in those uh, those regards. Any other comments? I mean, we'll be putting this together in an ordinance form and bring it for a first reading uh, at the next meeting. We'd we'll like to have a hearing, I guess, before the second reading. Before the, the second reading, and Mary, correct me if I'm wrong, it's got to be advertised twice in a two week period? Correct. So, what we've done in the past, the last couple of years, if y'all remember, um, 10 minutes before the meeting, I think it was, we had the public hearing and then we went into regular council meeting. So, did that make it go into our first meeting? September, I think, that for that two weeks, so you get the two week period. Uh, yes, yeah, but, and for the advertising portion, it will. Let's see. That's assuming I can get it in based on their. Um, I'll double check in the morning because I got a notice that they're having some advanced, or they moved the deadlines forward because of the holiday coming up in September. So um, I just have to check with them to see when I can get it inserted. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments for Tracy or myself on this issue? All right. Uh, we'll move on then to uh, this first reading. <coughs> the appealing of the Code Enforcement Board. 
I mean, someone to introduce this, and Tim Butler will speak to this since he's got most of the work on that. Uh, Mayor, if I may, I'll inter like to introduce ordinance number B, 2018, uh, repealing of code enforcement board, and um, have the read by our city attorney, Kim Butler. Uh, and I will read them what we can have any discussion if you like. Uh, an ordinance repealing in its entirety an ordinance style code enforcement board. Whereas on November 10, 2015, ordinance number B 2015 28 was adopted and provided for the creation of a code enforcement board for the city of Barstown, as well as providing administrative and procedural guidelines for enforcement actions and proceedings before said code enforcement board. And whereas enabling legislation under Kentucky revised statutes has been amended since the adoption of the above reference ordinance without changes being incorporated into the ordinance and whereas the city of Barstown's code enforcement board as, as originally constituted no longer has a quorum of members and whereas the need for regulatory enforcement through a code enforcement board has not been as efficient or effective as anticipated in the terms of generating regulatory compliance and thus the need for such enforcement through a code enforcement board is not as desirable or necessary as when the ordinance was originally adopted. Now therefore be it ordained by the city council of the city of Barstown that the code enforcement board ordinance enacted on November 10th, 2015 and any and all amendments enacted regarding that ordinance are hereby re repealed in their entirety and the Barstown code enforcement board designated there under hereby dissolved. Uh, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon publication as required by law. And this is a this is not a summary. This is the full ordinance, so I don't need to certify it. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, and I'll, Mayor, I'll answer any questions. We had the discussion uh, a few meetings ago about what was going on and um, covered a lot in the the whereas portion of that ordinance. But I'll answer any questions anyone has. Uh, does this affect any of the um, amendments that the the board had enacted? Or does it put us in any kind of no, no? The the uh, liens on the property are liens, and in, in there there are some liens on property. Those are in favor of the city of Barstown. Those would remain in effect. Um, the uh, the code enforcement board, any action they've taken has been completed there's nothing out there pending if that's your question yes. another question which would be related to the next ordinance which repeals the fines and, and penalties is are we left without the means to enforce and um, I went through uh, several times because we we would go through this circular thing where we convince ourselves everything was okay and then I would get the yips so to speak but um, when this was originally, when the Code Enforcement Board was originally enacted, we added a section to several of the penalty sections, which would be this next ordinance, that says that in lieu of, or in, a, in addition to, or in lieu of, uh, or in the alternative to, you had the uh, ability to enforce the Code Enforcement Board. So basically there was a um, penalty section and then there was an alternative where you could go up through the Code Enforcement Board. <coughs> Uh, by taking out the alternative that still leaves the original remedy, those are not being touched. And that was our intent, you know, when we did it, was to make it an alternative, not the sole way to enforce it. So we're not left without any way to, there's nothing that would be affected in terms of our ability to enforce other than we cannot do it through the Code Enforcement Board. Yeah, all the codes are still in place. Okay. All the rules are in place. It's just uh, changing. And the board and has not met since probably I think, I think close to two years ago. Close to, close to yeah. And okay. we don't even have a quorum. Several of the people when their time came up for to renew their membership said they wouldn't serve anymore. So we hadn't found anybody else to serve. So I guess we only have two people on the board at this time. So so we still have it basically all we're doing is reverting back to the way we used to do this. And we still have the code enforcement officer, and also uh, we have the uh, we still go to court if we need to, and we file liens if we need to. So. And we could always uh, reenact a code enforcement board in the future should we desire to do so. Councilor Copeland, did you have something to say on that? Mm -mm. Uh, mm -mm. You look That's like good. You, you look like you had a question. Mm -mm. So, uh, we need then a motion then to uh, approve.
approved and received it. No. Is there any other questions? No, no, no. It's just first reading. It's okay, I'm sorry, it's first reading. Okay. <coughs> we'll go to the second. It's next one, which is related, uh, the repealing of the code enforcement civil penalties and their fines. Uh, so introduce that, please. Thank you, if I may be in order, I'd like to introduce ordinance number B 2018, the repealing of the code enforcement civil penalties or fines. It'll have to be read by a city attorney. Yes, and I'll read a summary on this summary. one. Uh, summary of ordinance number B 2018, repealing of code enforcement <coughs> civil penalties or fines. An ordinance repealing B 2015 29 animals. B 2015-30 drainage control, B 2015-31 nuisances, B 2015-32 occupational licenses, B 2015-33 property maintenance, uh, B 2015-34 signs, B 2015-35 solid waste management and amending and adopting as amended an ordinance related to chapter 51 solid <coughs> waste management, chapter 90. Uh, animals, chapter 94 nuisances, chapter 98 signs, chapter 7, 117 occupational licenses, chapter 115 property maintenance, excuse me, 155 property maintenance, chapter 156 strange control of the city of Barstown's code of ordinances. The city council of Barstown, Kentucky does ordain as follows, that the amendments uh, be made to chapter 51 solid uh, waste management, uh, section 51.99 penalty, Chapter 99, Animal Section 90.99, Penalty. Chapter 94, Nuisances, Section 94.99, Penalty. Chapter 98, Signs, Section 98.99D, Penalties. Chapter 117, Occupational Licenses, Section 117.99, Penalties. Chapter 155, Property Maintenance, Section uh, PM-106.2, Penalty. <laughs> and chapter 156 drainage control section 156.99 penalty of the Barstown, city of Barstown's code of ordinances deleting from those various penalty sections references to civil penalties or fines to be assessed through the code enforcement board process all ordinances in conflict with uh, herewith are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflict this ordinance shall take uh, effect and be in full force immediately on its passage approval and publication is required by law this uh, summary was certified by me Tim Butler, City Attorney. Okay, that's the first reading on that one as well. Look, I guess there is a point I'd like to make on that one. Now. We can, so I think when I was City Attorney, we changed a lot of our stuff and assessed civil penalties. And, and we didn't, as before, we had the Code, code Enforcement Board. And that, so the city would collect it, so like we do parking tickets. We don't send that to the court unless they get a bunch. I mean, we could take the Code Enforcement Board out and still do a civil penalty. It would be assessed by the enforcement officer. And there's an option on just throwing that out for discussion. We kind of did that way back when because that way the fines and stuff would go to the city rather than the court system, you know, the rest of it just, and you would have some sort of enforcement that you could not have to, you know, something's going to end up with a $100 fine that we didn't have to go through the whole court system and fine a criminal charge. And, Doing all that, we could just set it, uh, set a civil penalty. So. We we've done something similar with the. Uh, if you all remember, we've redone just recently um, the um, public works engineering uh, fee structures and fines and things mm -hmm. to address to, that to address those. Um, it's not as that is where that's really important and valuable mm -hmm. um, in terms of things like nuisances and things. Uh, like somebody has junk in the yard, compliance is much more important than getting the fee or, or whatever. Um, and so, but I'll look at that. Um, I was just going to have a discussion. I'm not, I don't, I haven't really thought one way or other of your, uh, uh, it just occurred to me just now. I've read this earlier, but it didn't, didn't occur to me then. But uh, you recall the, then. the city collected many? Oh, I don't think they collected much, but I don't recall. I mean, I think I did that towards the end of my term. So. But it's kind of like, uh, uh, I guess the, was it the fire department thing? We had a system there and, and you know, we, now we got a collection company that's going to take right. care of collecting those and we're on false alarms and whatnot and it never was really collected. So it was a collection pro problem. And, you know, it's, it's constantly an issue and, and that's why it's so important to do that engineering thing. That was the main 
Yeah. That to me, you know, because it was a, it was a nuisance to me. It seemed like it was the main thing. And no, we I, mean, I don't really have a problem believing it is. I'm just, yeah. I just wanted to bring up my history of it, my knowledge, you know, yeah. so everybody would be aware of what it was and and consider that. But uh, I'm probably okay with the way it's written. Yeah, sort of doing that, but just really going back to the way it was before 2015. Yeah, yeah then maybe we'd like the district judge handle it. Back. <laughs> okay. he need, he's got free time. He needs free time. <laughs> but at the present time, we haven't really had a lot of really major issues come before us. Most of the ones that we've had, a lot of issues we've been pretty well about. And, and that may be in there. We, you know, we're just taking it back to pre-code enforcement board. So if there were changes made, those changes would still be. Yeah, made. I mean, I mean, the code enforcement person can also issue a warning. I mean, yes, so I don't know. This should have said a fine. Really does that much good, or does this thing? Just put something on the books that uh, we'll try to spend more trouble trying to collect probably than the money is worth. I would probably right, Tracy. Probably. <laughs> it's something we constantly have to adapt to. I did want to just throw out that history, so. <coughs> fine is only a punitive action then after the fact. I mean, how do you, how is that something like what you mentioned uh, enforced if you don't have that to hold on someone's head, so to speak? Um, well, you can, uh, you know, things, and, and I'm not just saying this because the judge is in the room, but it, the matters can go to uh, district court and, you, you know, a lot of times that you have a fine or penalty that is probated on the condition there's no future violations or whatever. So basically you hold that over their head. That's one option uh, when you start talking about holding something over someone's head. Uh, we're just really fortunate right now that, that we've, we've tried to move our system to where we get compliance, really more voluntary compliance. Um, and I give Jess we credit for that. We've, we've really, he's really done a good job about that. And, and so we are becoming less punitive and more, you know, and, and, and that's what people, when somebody comes in and they got trash in the yard next to them and we say, yeah, we got a fine, you know, we got a hundred dollar fine. They don't care, the trash is still there. Um, so getting that trash cleaned up is much more important than the fine to those people. Um, so that's the way, we're, like I said, we're constantly trying to look at, a, at better ways of doing that. Um, and I appreciate what Councilman Kelly said. We'll, we'll, well, I'll look for that and, and keep that in our tool, our tool bag of enforcement tools. And uh, if, if that was enacted and not repealed somehow uh, between his tenure and now, repealing this will not affect that. It still should be that option should, should still be available to us. Okay, any other questions or discussion? It's the first reading. <coughs> Second reading, next meeting. Um, next order is classification and compensation plan. Uh, I'm asking that the council members please introduce, introduce this. Somebody. Mayor, if I'm in order, um, I'd like to um, have ordinance number B 2018 classification and compensation plan uh, read by our attorney in full. Summary. Summary, excuse me. Like I said, in summary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And, and then converse, or questions after. Um, summary of Ordinance B, 2018 Classification Compensation Plan. Uh, an ordinance amending and adopting as amended an ordinance style, an ordinance creating a classification plan and compensation plan. This ordinance amends Chapter 35 Employment Policies the classification and compensation plan of the municipal code by amending the number of authorized positions, their title and pay grade, and setting the range, range, ranges for pay grades for city employees for fiscal year 2018-19 and, and subsequent years. The amendments and additions reflecting number of positions, title, and pay grade respectively are finance, add one cable internet uh, strike assistant, add support <coughs> specialist 108, Police add one property room technician 106. Fire strike seven add 10 firefighter PT 106. Electric um, 
one exempt city electrical engineer strike 126 add 123 strike four add five electrical electric lineman number two uh, 119 uh, cable internet strike cable internet assistant 108 change in the grade scale as follows all minimum wages are raised by three percent and all uh, maximums shall be 1.5 times the minimum this ordinance or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith are repealed to the extent of such conflict this ordinance shall be in full force and effect following the publication and summary as required by law i certify this summary is prepared by the <coughs> buffer city attorney We've got a couple of people here in the room that could probably talk to some of these changes. Greg, would you like to start? Sure. Um, as you can see, we moved the cable internet assistant from cable net to finance. Um, the police, that was the one additional full-time uh, property room technician for, they're going to do the property room stuff and then also the body cams once they uh, come online. The firefighters, they went from seven to ten part-timers. Um, and that's just so that they can have a large, it doesn't change the budget, but it's just so they can have a larger pool to draw from. You know, if they call all seven part-time firefighters and none of them can come in or none of them can get there that day, they've got an additional three to call. Uh, that's the only change, the reason for that change. Um, the lineman uh, was added, a new lineman went from four to five. Um, the city electrical, electrical engineer, so they, we changed that job description, we'll, we'll be um, at the next meeting, at the second reading, and it went from a 126 to a 123, and then you just strike the cable internet assistant because they moved to finance. How about the cable? Chief Natalie, you want to say anything about the part-time? Just like Greg said, the part-timers can only work so many hours, and so we're running into the situation where we had no one that we could call and come in and cover a shift when we needed them. So we're just adding to the list of people that we can call three more people. The lineman, the electric lineman, that was budgeted for the increase in the number of linemen this past year. And that was probably a room technician was too. It was, and, and that was twofold. One, it's been part time while it was just probably room tech, technician, but now that we're going to be adding the uh, body cams and Attention with all that data, that person will have to be a full time person to handle both of those, yeah. both of those jobs. Any other questions for Greg or any of the staff? That's the first reading as well. Okay, um, any reports from staff? Committees. Anything else to report? Okay, on the unfinished business, uh, we have a revised donation request from the Oscar Gets Museum. I know Linda McCloskey is here to uh, address the council with the revision, so would you like to? Yes. The reason why that I'm here, I've got a, um, I've written out different things. The whole reason that I want signage is so that people can find us. But one of the questions that was asked of me at the last time was how is this going to benefit the community? And so I have tried to list different things and how this will benefit the community and the people that are involved with it. So that my whole reason is so people can find us. There we go. Anyone else want to copy? And again, the whole reason for signing just so people can find us, and these are the ways that people are involved in how our building is involved in the community. Signs are everywhere and they play a very important role in human activity. Historic signs give continuity to public places and become part of the community memory. Additional and new signage will meet the needs of tourists by providing guidance to the historic Spalding Hall building, which is iconic to Bargetown. Spalding Hall houses the Oscar Getz Museum of Whiskey History and the Bargetown Historical Museum. 
Signs will help to convey the sense of excitement and vitality envisioned by Bargetown's historic <coughs> history and tourism. Signage for Paul Spalding Hall will preserve and improve the appearance of the city as a historic community. Signage will enhance and pr promote pedestrian and motor orientation in locating Spalding Hall. Signage is a large part of the overall plan to promote Spalding Hall as an iconic destination within Bargetown, as well as a very important resource building for the Bargetown community. This building houses the Burger Festival staff, an attorney's office, Kentucky Distillers Association office, two counselor offices, two heart association offices, a graphic designer, St. Joseph alumni, Spring Haven, which is a women's abuse counseling center, both museums, uh, as well as the Rick House uh, restaurant. The chapel is rented for red weddings, rehearsal dinners, showers, and community events as requested. The museums are used for our local school systems as teaching tools for our young future leaders to enhance their knowledge about their history and their heritage. The Great Lawn of Spalding Haas, the center point of many bourbon festival events, including the Master Distillers Auction and booths to showcase all of the distilleries. Vendors set up booths to sell their handmade crafts and homemade foods. The yearly arts, crafts, and antique fair also uses the Spalding Hall lawn for vendor exhibits and provide a place for tourists to rest and picnic. Students use the lawn for the end of the year school picnics, as well as fundraisers, which I didn't add. We have visitors from all over the world. This month, we've had visitors from Canada, England, China, Australia, New Mexico, and many other states in their union. Oscar Gatt's staff is, is helping our community by referring to us to local places to eat, other tourist attractions, and overnight accommodations. <coughs> I would appreciate your support in helping to add additional, as well as new signage for such an important, iconic, resourceful, and historical building. These are just a few of the things, and a lot of the people that use all of these resources need signage. Um, a lot of people come in and go and come into my office and to the museum and go, where's the offices upstairs? Where can we go? So we need to have signage for that. I have made pictures. Um, this one is the signage. If you're coming down, going down South Street, this is the signage. This is a close-up picture of it, and I will let you all pass this around. This is, this is a sign. This is the sign that we're looking for, and this is what it looks like if you're driving down the street. This is what it looks like if you are coming, if you are going north. And you'll see the little dots. This is a sign that you're looking for. And what did you say this was, Linda, again? This, this is, is coming this down. Is, this is going south. Uh -huh. This one, I've got to leave it on. This one's going south, and this one is going north. And this is the sign that you're looking for. And right here, as you can see, it's very hard to see it. Right well, here's the sign, and right here is the sign. So this is a close-up of it, but that's what it looks like from a vehicle standpoint. So what are you proposing? What, what kind of sign are you proposing to put there? Okay, I've got that. I'm going to go through all of them, and then I will show you. You want me to point out? Can you see where the sign is? That is a good point from a vehicle if you were driving down the street. I got a question. Lady. Yes. This Bowling Hall sign, is this this request, is this is this request for all the all the businesses in this building? Yes, I'm responsible for all of Spalding Hall. I'm required for all the maintenance. I'm responsible for all of the for everything that's required. In so none Hall. of none of the other individual businesses that are in there have any. Is that part of their lease or part of their rent or part of their, that they don't contribute in that signage? Uh, no, they do not. Don't you think they should? Well, yes, I, I would think maybe that's just something that the board has never asked of them to do. I, I'm at the pleasure of the board. Who's responsible for those, the other white signs? There is another sign. Uh, there, there, I've got other signs coming. Here is another small sign that is right out here that many people are not even aware of. This, i made a very close up. I walked right upon this, about 15 inches high. I'm suggesting that that be made larger, and I'll give you the estimates on that in just a minute. These are the signs that are on the metal gates, and I was right up on them. And these are the two signs here that you have a very hard time of even seeing. And 
I was very close to them. And this is on the back door. I'm proposing to add a sign on the back of the building so people that drive up to the back um, will be able to know where the museum is. Does anyone need for me to show them or explain any of the pictures? And here is an estimate. I've asked two of the sign companies here in Bargetown to give me estimates, and I only received one. So this is the only estimate that I received back. Yeah. That's the same one that's on our tablet? It could be, yes. Do I have this? Okay. Yeah, we have. And, and just to be clear, these signs, at least in, in part, would, would list private businesses? There is, another, there is another sign that we have to redo, but right now this is just a locates falling hall. There is another sign up there, and we do have to take some of the businesses off of it. Yeah, I was going to say that mm -hmm. the, um, that, that would be for the benefit of those businesses, and we absolutely can't do that. Um, but keep going. I'm, I'm, I had asked for five thousand dollars, and this bid was forty-seven hundred. So um, the other signs that will list the individual businesses also needs to be redone, but that will be at a later date. I'm kind of waiting on that one to see if we get other businesses. I have two rooms that are still vacant to occupy. So you're 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 requesting on behalf of the businesses also? No, not right now. Just this right here because I only asked for $5,000 and this right here is just for the signage. This is just before a front sign out front because when you drive up, you cannot, even if you're coming down, um, all of those signs, the, the poles are in the middle of it and you can't even see it. Uh, I would like to make a little sign that's like 15 inches that uh, you all can watch it on the or look for it on the way up. You hardly even notice it. It is really low down to the ground, and it's like 15 inches, and people don't even realize that it's there. I need that to be made bigger, like a four by four, and then the ones next to the fence. I would like for them to be like two by three foot. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. Thank you so much for coming back early. Yes. Thank um, you. We, we truly appreciate that. I do not believe that we ever um, thought that the signs weren't important. Um, that wasn't the question. The question was about the expense of the signs. And originally, the expense was less than what we have now. And now we're talking about Spalding Hall with all of the businesses. Um, are we just, I just want to make sure I understand, are we just speaking about Oscar Getz or we're talking about Spalding Hall? Spalding Hall and then the different, the different uh, businesses. Right now, I'm just talking about the front signs that you have seen here. And there is another sign that I do not have that will be maybe at our expense because I don't want to redo that sign right now because I have <coughs> rooms that are vacant and I want to rent those rooms. And I, when we do a sign, I want to be able to add those to it. And so that sign is not on here for that reason right now. I want to wait until those rooms are rented. but. Just finding, yes. Didn't you request, didn't last time you were talking specifically about the Oscar Gets yeah, Museum yeah. and doing these markers around town and so forth. Yeah. Now it looks like the whole thing has changed totally. Well, not really because Oscar Gets Museum is housed in Spalding Hall and that's my responsibility. But I don't think we can have those other businesses in the conversation. I, we're not. Really that's not even part of it. It seems to me like it. The only, the only. We're, we're confused here. Um, okay, it started out with Oscar Getz, okay? Yes. So, what, all I'm saying is that, I mean, because I believe that you need signs, but Councilman Buckman is correct. When we were, pre when you came to mm -hmm. present to us, it was about specific points. Now we're talking about, this is a little different, and it's about Spalding Hall. We understand that Oscar Getz is in Spalding Hall, but I truly do not think that if it's for Spalding Hall, Spalding Hall houses other businesses, and that truly isn't the council's or city's responsibility. If you're talking about Oscar Getz, then that, that's an issue that we should, we should hear. So it has to be one or the other, and it can't be both. And right now, I think, I mean, I want you to just take a minute, because I think the way you're presenting to us is that 
it's Spalding Hall. We know that you're over Spalding Hall, but this has to be about Oscar Getz. Okay. If, if you understand where I'm coming I from, I think we are all saying the same thing. Like a sign like this would be okay. It has History Museum, Whiskey Museum on it, mm -hmm. I think. So that's so, Oscar Getz only, I would think. You're so you're okay. wanting, okay, I was just going to redo the signage that is already there. Uh -huh. And this is what we had. So we were going around and we were looking. And I talked to the preservation officer and she agreed. So since then, and I did not realize there were so many um, requirements for signage, to say the least. I have learned a lot in this past month. Believe me, I've learned a lot. So um, I would, if you all want it just to be for Oscar Getz Museum, I can go back to that. Linda, well, Linda I, mean, I hope you I hope you understand. We're not at all no. trying to pick on you on this. I so understand. I know. We have to be stewards of I know. I understand. taxpayer money, I understand. and there's a specific set of rules mm -hmm. that we have to mm -hmm. abide by when we're spending. I this understand. Money. So, but I was I was under the impression. I think the last time that you were here, that we were talking about roadway signs and then some things that were going to bring people into the community, right. okay. which would benefit the community as a whole, which would make it easy for and, us to say yes. And that is another hole that brown signs are absolutely, and, and the blue signs out on the road, I don't think we're gonna be able to afford that because that's gonna be a yearly annual fee that I have to pay, which is a very high fee, Understood. which I'm not gonna be able to afford that. The brown signs are gonna to have to be at a later date. I was just trying to find uh, a way in order to get people to know where we were. You know, and there's a lot of usage that is in that building for the city. And I would just like for people, I have tourists that come in every day and say, you need some signage. We like to have never found you. But when you, when you mentioned Spalding Hall, and you, in, in your presentation here, you named all the different businesses that are involved in this Spalding Hall. Mm -hmm. If that were the case, and they decided, and you decided that they all need signage, then they need to contribute to this more so than this request for funds here because every if you put the spalling if you put that up for spalling hall you're taking care of all these people which is not specifically what you asked for when you recently came i just i just the reason that i listed all of this stuff was just to let you all know how much <coughs> that building is used by the community that is the only reason that i mentioned all of that uh, the, the issue, there's a, there's a restriction that we have to operate under and it says that it must be an activity, the activity must be one in which the city could independently engage. And um, as an example, the marketplace, a lot of businesses, and we would never pretend to replace the marketplace sign because that would benefit the businesses in there and the businesses in there need to do the marketplace. If in that building was a nonprofit that said we want to do something, we might consider that because we we can do uh, things with nonprofits um, as a city government, but we can't um, use taxpayer dollars to uh, unilaterally benefit a private business. It's just not something we can do, and so that's where um, I think that the um, the issue is that the, the council is referring to. I could definitely see us, like Councilman Kelly had mentioned, I could definitely see us helping you with signage such as the Oscar Getz Museum sign. Okay. Uh, I could definitely see us, us doing that. Uh, so doing the whole Spalding Hall thing, the panel that says Oscar Getz on that Spalding Hall, I, I think we could do. And if you had uh, you know, some calls on directional signs out in the city to get them to the Oscar Getz, I think that's something we can do. In, in particular, in this mean, particular case, you, the, it, it's in, to the city's benefit to direct traffic here in particular, specifically. It's in the city's best interest for our for functioning of city government. I don't think that there's an issue there at all. Uh, you can make the same argument for any of the businesses in Spalding Hall. We just can't help those businesses. So it's a, it's, there's a two-pronged requirement that you have to meet. Um, Oscar Getz would meet both, the other businesses would not. And um, with that direction, perhaps you can yet again <laughs> <laughs> uh, amend this and, and come back. I don't 
I want you to think that I'm going to try to put signage up for all of these buildings. I don't want you all to think that. Can I help just, a little bit? Yes, yes, yes. I, yes. I need to say her. Yes. Uh, what it is, when she contacted me, we were looking at trying to redo the Spalding Hall sign and make another Spalding Hall sign down by the building where, so that people know that this is where Spalding Hall is. Mm -hmm. And there's a white sign, which Joe alluded to, that has the businesses on it. That's not what That's she's not talking right. about. So I, I want to get to that point because you had it. And so what she's trying to do is get people, when they're, they're already looking for Spalding Hall, but she wants to get them to find it. <coughs> You're trying to get yeah, them which find. we can't, we right. can't in Spalding and Hall, we can't do. Now, after me listening to what you all, what now I know what's really going on with everything, it, I think she can represent it now and kind of, yeah, I'm going to draw that. Yeah, yeah, I think I th she now that I'm understanding. Only and Barstow yeah. Historic yeah. Museum. Yeah. Those yeah. two museums you're okay with? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. They're okay. non profit. They're non profit. Yes. Just not the biggest part of all of us. Not for me to put the board for all the business on there. No. We will be helping out a private no. business. No, that's, not, that's not what I wanted at all. That is not what I wanted. Uh, there is a sign there, but that was not even part of it. I just mentioned all of this other because different people were saying, how is this going to com uh, benefit the community? And so I just wanted you all to know all of the different things that went on in Spalding Hall to where people would need to find it. Not that you're going to benefit it, but this is just what, this is an iconic building, it's an historic building, and it's a very resourceful building in, uh, in Bargetown. And I just wanted you all to know all of the things that took place there. And how how many times the community is managed? One of the reasons we're a little skittish, and correct me if I'm wrong, if we approve this for private business, we are oh, we're personally liable to the door. Huh? We're opening the door. I, so, I mean, we're as council members personally liable. Yes. I mean, it comes out of our pocket. <laughs> Somebody can sue us and pay out of our pockets. <laughs> so, I think it's not just the city. We all go now. I understand. What, what are the yeah. points yeah. Yeah. that the council has raised? I think you need to uh, yeah. try to meet those and come back to be able to notice them. So, okay. <laughs> So let me get this clear. So we can do, uh, we can redo just, do you want this part of the sign redone or can we do a new sign? Because this is not very well visible, visible at all. Is that just, uh, is it just us? There is a, there's a rick house below it. The rick house is below, so we can't do that. I understand that. But just this part, I want to well, do. I, I think you can do the whole part there, but we can only pay for the panel that's attached to it that says. Uh, and so I would need to get him to pay for this part. Yes. If well, we added I mean, that to it. The structure that he attaches to, we can't pay for the Spalding Hall structure. We can pay for the Oscar Guest panel that goes on the Spalding Hall structure. Are you understanding? I, I'm, I'm on board with okay. it. I know exactly and, what you're asking. And yeah. then the 4x4 four four sign out here that is the little sign, bigger, and then one in the back. So that would be three that you all will be okay with. We just have to bring it back. Yeah, we got to bring it back. Yeah, we got to bring it back. You can give us a rendition of it. Yeah, yeah, now that I, yes, now that I know what we're trying to do, yeah. And, and then we, you know, all yeah. we get a rendition and so this is what this sign, it looks like this is what Paul says. These signs have been added on to over the years and that's what it's all on one. Yeah. It doesn't need to be on. I don't even think this one was originally, this was no, just added was on added to the bottom. It gives that on. Mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't show up because it's black. So we don't even need to say Spalding Hall on it. It just needs to say Oscar Getz Museum at Bargetown well, Historical Museum. you need to identify Spalding Hall. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's there for you, Spalding Hall. So you are okay with me saying Spalding Hall? Yeah. Yes. We can't pay for that part. Oh, you can't pay for that part. It needs okay. to be a sign that would say Oscar Getz. Well, and that's what this is. Well, no, is but, Hall? well yeah. that's what I'm, well, well I just didn't really know. Willie's got it. Willie's got it. Willie's got it. When he makes up a sign, yeah. he's attaching yeah. different panels to that yeah. overall yeah. directory sign, I'll call it. We can pay the panel for the panel that attaches to <laughs> the sign that says Oscar Gift. We can't pay for the structure. Structure. We can pay for that panel. Okay. And then what are other signs that you'll Okay. You may just tell say Oscar Gift. signs that you were talking about before. Yes. You know, for direction and things. And well, and I want one on the art gates that you all had a picture of, and then one in the back that just said Oscar Getz. Yeah. We're good. I mean, you I, understand I know what now? Yes, I know exactly okay. what Okay. Mean. Does anybody have. <laughs> I'm learning the signage process, people, let me tell you. Well, this uh, is not, this not really is not signage signage over it's, this. Pardon it's, me? It's not really signage. We're stewards of the public money, and we I have to conform yes. to law. 
I understand. Any, any other yeah. questions? I will concur that the All right, I will be back. Yes. I will concur that you do need signage. Okay. I'm in that lot a lot, and yeah. I need to tell more people where to go over here because you cannot see their signs. Yes. And you need a direct one sign where we just can't pay for all of them. Well, I understand. I understand. And thank you all for listening to me. Uh, like I said, I'm in the learning process, and I had no idea that there were so many rules and regulations to go with all of this. But, and, uh, yes, I brought him with me. I said, I'm going to need help. So thank you all very much. And the famous words are all be up. So, all right. We're, we're done. We're done? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, we've got a couple of requests for some uh, walk runs. Uh, the first one is the St. Joseph Montessori uh, 5K on November 3rd. Uh, Cindy Packard and I assume they've talked this out with you, Chief, and also. We are in the process of working with the event organizers, so if we could. Uh, we're just working out the details of those. So we've, we've got some few details to work out, but we're, so if we could just, uh, I guess, pass that, uh, the permit, I guess, until we get those, just the last minute um, details passed like we've had on the last couple permits. So is the route going to stay pretty much the same? You just got to work out the details on you. The route has changed, uh, I think. We, we are using the exact same route as the next one that's on the, agenda for the new life center we actually they were kind of we, we just had some, some we have some uh just some traffic concerns that we were looking at that were that assistant chief Sealy is working with that it will, will be no issues we just want to make sure that we have uh, some traffic points covered uh but if she she would you be comfortable with us approving the subject to your, your yes provisions? like we have in the past absolutely yeah. Is this the first time for this event? First time that we're asking to do it in the city. We did it out the fairgrounds last year. That's right. There's some roads to cross. Yeah. So more than likely it's going to be the one that's going to be held on Thanksgiving Day at the same route, basically. The exact same route, yes. Because this is a... Okay. Uh, We'd also request some money for some signage. <laughs> 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 I, I would then entertain a motion to approve the request for St. Joseph Montessori for their 5K to be held on 11-3, subject to approval of working out the logistics for traffic control and pedestrian control with Chief Cressig and, and her staff. So moved, Mayor. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Williams. Is there any discussion? I'm just going to point out I'm going to be abstaining because my son's presenting that i got three grandchildren there, so I... I don't think I really have to, but just just for just, just to make sure it looks good. You'd be in it though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be get the last place prize in. <laughs> okay, we have a motion to second. There's no further discussion. All in favor, signify and say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. All right. The next one we have is for the new life center. I think. Oh man, show me a statement. Huh? I'm second to say I used to say that. I've got your statement. All right. Okay. Uh, Life Center, they have a 5K on Thanksgiving Day, and I think they've done this in the past. I know they did it last year. Uh, they've got their uh, drought included, I think. It's, just it's like, the same route. It's the same route, route with a different start point. Right. right. They start from Tiger Alley, your start from Xavier Drive. Yeah, right. it's the same route. Ask them for a motion to approve the new life center's request for their 5K to be approved for Thanksgiving Day, November 22nd. So, so we're still doing the same thing, and we're working on logistics with them. So, subject to her. Subject to Chief President's approval. Uh, Please. Yeah. We have a motion by Council Copeland. Second. Second. Second by Council Checkers. Any other discussion? I will also show me abstaining on this one as well. They lease property from me. So. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, the next item is our uh, Chapter 114 uh, Alcoholic Beverages. Um, it's, it's
so when we're going to talk about it. I guess we're going to just talk about amended the ordinance tonight. Correct. I'm going to have it. So um, there's two things going on here. Number one, uh, I asked Jennifer if she could speak to it. There's been a number of changes at the state level that have gone in, uh, been enacted over the last two years, and we have to change our ordinance for that. And then you all received a copy of the uh, request uh, from the Bourbon Capital Community Alliance along with uh, Encina and the Chamber and Main Street and Tourism and also the Kentucky Bourbon Festival to consider changing the Sunday hours uh, from 1 p.m. to uh, 10 a.m. So, Jennifer, would you just like to speak uh, to just some of the changes you've had to make just in the general language of the ordinance, and then we'll talk about the hours. Yeah, uh, basically, uh, there's a lot of definitions that are added, so that as we have a lot of new businesses come into town, they can read our ordinance, and these are all based on KRSs, and they can get a better grasp of what they need from us as a city, and the state as well. But, so, you'll see throughout that there's several that we just did not have listed. We may have offered the license, but we just needed to define it. Um, also, uh, we had some things in there where uh, we needed to add a license, um, just so that we were on par with the state. That's the city's job, is to mirror what the state offers within our rights as a city. So that's what, that's why this is added. And then there's some things that, due to recent changes, we couldn't offer. So you'll notice that's in there too. And then in the back, there's just some changes as far as um, fees, and those are just changes that reflect um, misdemeanors and felonies. Um, that part of our ordinance was from 1991, and as you can imagine, those prices increased. So um, that's basically our ordinance revision in a nutshell. So the, the definition <coughs> right there, I saw, I guess they're verbatim out of the statute, exactly word for word for the statute. One of the intents here is that someone coming in and doing business here would be familiar with this because it mirrors the state. It should, I mean. Yeah, it, it's been extremely, I know in the past it's been difficult because you try to mesh two things that don't mesh. And where do we put them? It doesn't really match. They got this from the state, but we don't have that. Where do we put them? And I give Jennifer kudos here. She's done a lot of work <coughs> to get to this point. The one thing that is missing, um, we had discussed the Sunday hours, but that's more of a policy issue rather than, you know, we. I told Jennifer that I didn't think we should make any kind of recommendation about Sunday hours because that's not something that's mandated by the state. It's allowed by the state, but it's not mandated by the state. It's not something that would mesh with the state. Um, that is more of a policy decision, and that would be your all's call in terms of making that change. Yeah, that's why there was no changes on this draft that you saw, because it was waiting for our input on that. That does fall within the parameters of the state. What yes. they're asking for the BCCA, yes. that does fall well within the parameters of the state. So Louisville, yes. Louisville just went to the 10, 10 a.m., and I know Frankfurt just changed theirs, I think, to 11 a.m. So, you know, I think their position is to us to be competitive in, in that regard, the Bourbon Trail, all the visitors, and local as well. That we need to be competitive with our surrounding uh, market. I have to read through uh, both the long form and the short form. There'd be one question that I would have, and it's, and it's unclear to me uh, the distinction between distilled spirits and malt beverages a lot of times. Uh, this, for instance, you know, uh, one of the paragraphs in the summary says that um, on the Sunday, the amended section 114.40b to strike on Sunday and or at any time during the 23 hours of Sunday, uh, it says Sunday is to be no different than any other day in association with malt beverages. So does that need to be changed? Does that verbiage need to be changed to include distilled spirits? No. Uh, malt beverages are the only thing that you can actually you can absolutely sell. Okay, so that would, that would be on the changes that were that are proposed then. 
that we're looking at as yeah, far as to sell or wines. I think what, 8 a.m. on Sunday, I think. Yeah, or you can sell a malt beverage from it's 6 a.m. It's 6 a.m. Yeah. yeah. It's just that this still <coughs> broke out, and that's what we're going to have to address. Okay. If that's what we want to do. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, Bill, I think you've had a lot of contact about the, the Sunday hour from 1 to 10. Yeah, and that's in conjunction with just like you said, being competitive with our neighbors, you know, with the other ones like Frankfurt and more and Because, you know, people there, they travel the bourbon trail, they, uh, uh, we want to be as consistent as we can. Uh, so that's, as we're growing, then that's, that's just, uh, that just goes to territory, really. Well, I think a number of the local restaurants are, are want to go for more uh, of a brunch, maybe on Sundays, which is sort of conducive to this as well, which they had this opportunity, they would do more of the brunches than, than they are right now. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of feed, positive feedback as far as the moving the hours back, and that, no, no negative, as long as we don't consider the other end of it. That's, uh, that's the only thing that I'm getting uh, from constituents is that, you know, it's okay to back it up a couple of hours into you know to the 10 a.m. hour. I don't see any problem with that. But if we look at the 1 a.m., then there would be some issues. They don't want you to go to no, three or four yeah, that's, like they do in the right. But you can't hear class two, class four C. That's the state said. Yeah, I'm not sure on that. Believe me, if I if we went over later, I would have done Used to be full. Uh, two since my college days. <laughs> 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 you, I know you. I don't know if you're <laughs> called. That deals with your classification. It used to be full. Well, that that goes with your classification, but class city though. Right. But I, we, the only problem I ever saw with our one o'clock was we had a lot of people that would leave bars on, at one o'clock and drive to Louisville because they still had three hours and then put them on the roads and everything for down there and back. And uh, you'll. But that's because we're a point class city as well. Yeah. That's why the hours are one o'clock. But that's not that's before that's us. That's we're not talking about way. We'll open up a can of worms like yeah, Council you know, you know, Member Dolan you know, said on that. So we're. I, I think that the uh, what we need is direction in terms of uh, th does anyone have any strong opinion against uh, having first read on the, the the ordinance as proposed with then a change to those hours on Sunday from uh, one to ten one p.m. to to ten a.m. back in the day. Does anybody have a strong opinion that we should not do that? If not, we'll have first reading. You all can take a vote. Okay. Right. Or don't have to right now. Do we? No, it's not on for. I mean, we don't have to take a vote. We have first reading. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, we can't have first read today because what the F does first read, but it's not on for first read. But we'll make that change. I think this discussion gives us a, a community a lot more chance to react to it too and give us feedback. Yes. Yes. True. Yes. Thank you, Jennifer, and, and on you attend uh, that ton of work. And you can tell by reading all these changes, there's been a lot of work put into this, a lot of research. So, yes, Jennifer. Thank you for that. I a lot of people like to take credit for it. It's Susan, <laughs> we are expert person. Or it already is. Uh. <laughs> okay, we'll go on to the next item. Any of the council members have anything to bring before the council this evening? Okay. Uh, you have any announcements on Buttermilk Day or anything coming up? I mean, next week, starting next Thursday. 639. Uh, Early morning. Early morning. It's a long time. You were a youngster when that started. Okay, uh, no seminary deeds. Uh, we uh, had a 
I think from the Attorney General's office, you know, we're under requirement to uh, present this information. You're doing it under the law about the open records and so forth. So, Mary, you want to yeah, talk uh, to that? All of the council members have a packet in front of them. The proof of receipt that's on the top, if you would please sign and give that back to me tonight. Um, the, the changes that were made are summarized in the following page. And I say summarize, it's a two-page summary, so it's kind of lengthy. Um, but essentially, the Attorney General's office made a few revisions to the Kentucky Open Records and Open Meetings <coughs> Act. And as you know, you all get that once you are elected or appointed, and then any time the Attorney General makes changes. So it's that time. Um, you're provided with both um, your duty under the law and managing public records, the two publications from the Attorney General's office, even though the changes are only to the your duty under the law. So that may be a little confusing. You're getting both as required by law. Um, and then I'll verify with the Attorney General's office that everyone's complied and you'll be open meetings experts. Yeah, I think it seems like there was a couple of changes made just in the last session. We made a couple of changes. Very recently. The main one is really how they are handling uh, handling open meetings through video conferencing. There had been some restrictions before. They're sort of broadening the way uh, people can participate. Not only council members, but residents can participate in open meetings through video conference. So. You have trouble sleeping tonight. You can read that. <laughs> um, have you got forms for us to sign? I do. I'll have. I have a couple for you, and we'll do that tomorrow. Okay. But every you, council you, member has one okay. in front of them. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Uh, any other questions to Mary for this? Uh, the last thing is just to make an announcement. You know, we been in, having a, contr a contract with PLG TV for the last 20 plus years, I guess. Uh, they handle you know, the insertions you know, in our cable television operation, and then we have a contract with them where we receive a commission uh, based on the amount of revenue that they generate from those insertions. So it's a five-year contract. It's just up for another renewal as we're currently in discussion with them, and we'll be bringing the the new contract to you. The current one expires, I think, December 31st this year. So um, I don't think there'll be any, any real changes. I think this will be our fifth fifth contract with them. And that so, any questions on that? We'll have a contract in front of you here shortly. Um, nothing else, and I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. Who's that? Uh -huh. <laughs> a second. Second. Gospel is All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks. We've got it. Thank you.